You are listening to King Jesus Radio, the official podcast of New Living Way Church. So do you guys know whose house you're in today? The house of the Lord. And who's in you? Amen. The Holy Spirit of our Heavenly Father is in us. And we have the privilege to come to his house, to hear of him, to hear his word, to sing praise and worship to him. So we thank him for that. And it is a beautiful day. We thank him for all that he's done, for his beautiful creation for not leaving us abandoned, but showing us that he loves us so much. We serve an awesome, amazing, mighty, powerful God. He reigns forever. His kingdom doesn't pass away. And to him, we can give him all glory because it is a joy that he has put in our heart that we can say, Lord, we are thankful, we're grateful, and we can celebrate who he is. We have uh, an awesome privilege to serve a mighty God. He is a big God. And today, remember that he is a big God. He is a big God for all of us in every area of our life. He's a big and mighty God. And there's nothing that can come between the love that he has for us. And that's powerful. And that's something to hold on to, to cherish. And don't let go of that. A lot of things we're not supposed to hold on to tight in life. But don't let go of the Lord. Hold fast. Hold tight to him. Amen. So thank you for being here in his presence. And we're going to open up in prayer. Father, we come before you this day, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for your beauty, for your love, for your mercy, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness unto your church, Lord. Father, as we come together to worship you, Lord, Lord, let it be a sweet and pleasing offering, Lord, unto you, Lord. We love you, Father. We worship you, Lord, with all that's within us, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for everyone here in your presence, Lord. Everyone witnessing, Father, Lord, of your name, Lord. Everyone watching, Father, Lord, and hearing your word, Father, and the power that it has, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for every part that you take care of in our lives. We love you. We thank you. And, Lord, we magnify you this day, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. seek this morning are you seeking Jesus this morning that's what we're here to do today to seek our Lord our Savior our King because he alone is worthy that's what we together as a church are doing here today We're coming together in unity in one accord to seek the one to whom we believe in today. The one who saved us. The one who died for us. The one who rose again on the third day. And the one who is coming back for us. Jesus, Lord of all. Oh, but we're here today because we heard the word of God and we accepted the word of God and that word landed on good soil because the word of God says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord oh you shall be saved and we're here today because we know that we believe in our hearts today. So whom do, we, whom do we seek today? Did you come here today to seek Jesus? Are we here today because we're coming together to seek Jesus? Did you wake up this morning with a heart of gratitude? And wanting to seek Jesus this morning? Well, even if you didn't, that's okay. Because he's so merciful that he's willing to take this time and help us to refocus and say, Lord, forgive me, Lord God. Because I'm here this morning to seek you and you alone. Because he's so faithful. 
And I don't know if this word is for me. I know it's for me, but I don't know who else it's for here today, but I believe it's for all of us. I believe it's for you, Andrea, for that testimony you gave. I believe it's for you, Yolanda. I believe it's for you, Alvis. I believe it's for you, Lila. I believe it's for you, Liz. I believe it's for all of us here today and all those that are watching with us this morning. Because I don't know what you've been going through that has been so overwhelming. But this word right here reminds me in you that when we feel overwhelmed, we can remember what our Lord did for us through His suffering, through His persecution, through His loneliness, through His betrayal, through His anxiousness. Because in John 18, verse 1, it says, When Jesus had spoken these words, He went out with His disciples across the brook, brook Kedron, where there was a garden which He and His disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed Him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with His disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. See, as a child of God, you will go through things. You will face things. The Bible says your adversary, the devil, prowls around like, roaring like a lion, looking to whom he may be devoured. But he says, submit to God, then resist the devil and he will flee from you. And this is understanding that this crowd of soldiers came with weapons and torches to come to get Jesus. But even in this place where he felt so heavy and so alone, but nevertheless, he never forgot who he is. Because it goes on to say, Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? Who are you looking for? Who is it that you are seeking here? And see, so you may be wondering, why am I going through this? Why am I feeling like this? Why did I have this situation, this circumstance? Well, because the devil, the enemy, wants to come in and steal your joy. He wants to steal your peace. He wants to steal your comfort. He wants to snatch the word of God that has fallen on good soil in your heart. He wants to attack your mind. He wants to cause division. He wants to come in in any way, shape, or form that he can. To deceive you, to lead you astray, to cause you to ask more questions than seeking His answer, the Lord's answer. They send everybody they had to the Lord Jesus as He was about to be crucified. And the Lord already knew the will of the Father. The Lord already knew who they were looking for, but what He was doing was He was exposing why they were truly there. Because let me tell you something. Not everybody will always be for you. Oh, but praise God that if God be for you, then who can be against you? Because you have the majority. And you know to whom you seek. And you know why you seek Him. And they answered Him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am He. And Judas who betrayed Him was standing with them. Oh, but here's the blessing. 
In verse 6, it says, when Jesus said to them, I am he, they threw back, they drew back and fell to the ground. They drew back and fell to the ground when Jesus said, I am he. Imagine that whatever's trying to come against you, whatever you may be going through, whatever you may be facing, whatever trials and tribulations come your way, whatever waters may seem too tall, whatever fire may seem too hot, whatever mountain may seem too high, just know that you got the greater one for you today. And Jesus said, I am he. And when he said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. We may not be able to say, I am he, but we can sure say the name of Jesus. And as Andrea shared that testimony, as she called on Jesus, 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 the mountain started to fall. Those principalities started to draw back. Those walls started to tear down. And let me tell you something today. We have the name above all names, the name of Jesus. And you don't have to go through it alone. Because it's still a walk of faith. And we still have to walk it through. And in this time, Jesus was displaying his authority. But in that authority, he was also displaying his submission to the will of the Father. Did you catch that? See, it's not always easy to suffer. It's not always easy to submit to God. Because God's will is not always easy, but it's good. But don't ever let your submission to God ever take away from the authority of God and the rule of God that is in your hearts today. Don't base on what you go through, where you're at today, how you feel. Don't let that determine the love that God has for you. Don't let that determine your walk with God. You keep trusting the Lord. Because even though Jesus said this, he went on again in verse 7 to say, so he asked them again, whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. But he goes on to say, and Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. He was still willing to lay down his life for the sake of the brethren. He was still willing to lay down his life in obedience to the will of the Father. And because he did so, it goes on to say, this was to fulfill the word that he had spoken of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. How many of you belong to the Lord this morning? How many of you belong to the Lord this morning? And no matter all that you've gone through and all that you face and continue to face today, his word says because he was willing to lay down his life, he has not lost not one of all that the Father has given him. So we can give the Lord praise this morning for thank you, Lord, this morning that, Lord, you have not lost me, my God. And I am not lost, but I have been found, Lord Jesus. And I thank you today, Lord God. Because it's you to whom I seek. And it said, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? Stop trying to do things on your own. Stop trying to make things happen. Stop trying to do it because you think it's the right way. Because he told Peter, stand down. So wherever you're at today in your life, let me encourage you, stand down. Lay down. Submit to God. Resist the devil. 
and he will flee from you. Submit to the will of God and know that to all those that God the Father has given the Son, he has not lost not even one. And you are not lost today. You have been found. And thank you, Lord, this morning that all those that are lost today, Lord, oh, we thank you, Jesus, today in Jesus' name that they have been found. Because that is the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. So I tell you this morning, who do you seek this morning? Whom do you seek this morning? It's the Lord Jesus. Oh, then praise God. Because that means his power, his authority, his salvation, his saving work is being done in this place in the hearts of all of us today and to the ends of the earth this morning. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you the glory and the praise and the honor, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, this morning for reminding us, Lord God, that Father God, Lord Jesus, you have not lost us. We are not lost, Father, because, Lord, we have been found in you, Lord Jesus. So no matter what we may face and go through, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we do not go out about it alone, Lord Jesus. And we thank you that you have given us the name above all names, Lord, the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, we could call upon you, Lord Jesus, as we look to you to seek you, Father God. Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord God, because, Lord, that is what we have come here to do together as we meet as a church. We come together to meet as a church to seek you, our Lord and our Savior, our God and our King. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, my God, for bringing about salvation we thank you, Father God, for bringing about healing and deliverance. We thank you for restoring, my God. We thank you for the refreshing. We thank you for your peace and your comfort. And we thank you, Father God, as Lord Jesus, as we come together today to, in these songs of praise and worship, Lord, it was all to seek you, Lord, because, Father God, we're declaring who you are. And, Father God, you are great. You are faithful. You are wonderful. You are Lord of the heavens, my God. But Father God, you are also our Lord, our Savior, our God, and our King this morning. So Father, we thank you this morning, Lord God, for tearing down those walls, Father God, for moving those mountains, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, Lord Jesus, for helping us through, Lord, and being our strength. But Lord, you are the very air that we breathe, my God. And we just thank you this morning. We give you all the glory and the praise and the honor as we continually seek you this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen. If you didn't get to greet your neighbor this morning, let's get on up on our feet and greet our neighbors this morning. Amen. And we want to thank everybody for joining us online this morning as well. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for sharing that testimony, too. Praise God. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> amen, amen, brother. How is this, brother? Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Welcome together as we come together as a church this morning. Praise God that we have a place to come to, that we have a place to come and seek our Lord and Savior, our King, our God, our Father. And you know what? Just knowing that, God, you are so faithful because you are everything that we need. You are all that we need. And how many of us believe today that, my God, you have met every need according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus this morning? Amen? So we could be grateful to God this morning for being so faithful and so good and for taking the time to allow us just to praise him and to glorify him because there's nothing like being in the presence of God. 
There is nothing like being in the presence of God. But it's also knowing to whom you seek in the presence of him. Knowing that, Lord, I'm here to seek you. I'm here to seek you because of who you are. Because of who you are to me and all that you've done for me, Lord. I'm not here to, looking for anything in return. I'm just here because, Father, thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. And thank you for never giving up on me, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for being faithful to bring me through. Amen? Praise God this morning. Praise God. Well, this morning we've got a couple of quick announcements this morning. We do have Bible study on a Wednesday night. So we will be meeting here in the Annex Room at 7 o'clock at uh, 7 p.m. So we encourage you to join us to study along with us. We are in the book of uh, Acts chapter 13. And uh, we're just grateful to the Lord to be able to study his word together. Amen. So we encourage you to join us for studying the word of God and coming together to seek him through his word, through the study of his word, and just being able to grow together. Amen. So Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Also a Friday night prayer. We are having Friday night prayer and we are going through the book of Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 33. And uh, this past Friday, we went through the word seek and it had to do a lot about seeking and what seeking means. And so this is what we did. We just talked a little bit about it, and then we prayed as the Lord, as the Lord led us by his spirit on Friday night. So we encourage you to join us, and this, uh, this Friday will be kingdom of God, amen? So we will be looking at that a little bit and, and just seeking the Lord through prayer and just seeking him to teach us through it, amen? Amen. So uh, we're looking, we're, we're grateful to God for that as well. And also, uh, we're looking forward to, uh, how many of us love anniversaries, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we went to the month of August and actually the month of August was the anniversary, 83 years of God's faithfulness to New Living Way Church. Amen. So God has been just so faithful over the years and he remains faithful and we're just thankful to him for continuing to be faithful. And just, you know what, it's it's just just a blessing that, you know, what we get to be a part of the continuing work that God started in this house. And so we would like to come together on the 26th of September, which will be in two weeks. And we're just going to come together and celebrate uh, the, God's faithfulness and the anniversary of, uh, you know, the church. And just also just also kind of an end of the summer type of deal as well. So we're looking forward to what the Lord's going to be doing. So we will have some food. We encourage you to come out and join us. It'll be at 1045. Um, so I know it's a little hot. So what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be having it inside the annex. Amen. There's air conditioning in there, amen? So we're looking forward to what the Lord has that day. So we encourage you just to come and join us that day. We're just going to come and celebrate together. Feel free to bring somebody along with you if you like, you know what, and just come together. And you know what, I said there'll be food, amen? There'll be physical food and spiritual food, amen? So we'll be meeting next door in the annex room that day. And you know what, just to be able to come together and just to fellowship and just to celebrate and to be thankful for all that God has done for us. Amen. So that'll be on the 26th in two weeks, September 26th. And the service time will still be the same, 1045. There will be no um, first, ser- uh, first word in the morning, no prayer in the morning, no 915. Um, so we'll have some time to set up and stuff like that. So really looking forward to that. And uh, I will be calling on some of you guys for some help. So praise God. Or if you'd like to help, just let me know. And I'll definitely, you know. We, we will use you. <laughs> we'll be used of the Lord. Amen. Not use you. We'll be used of the Lord together. Amen. To serve together. So looking forward to that and, and it'd be just looking forward to what the Lord has for us that day. Praise God. Well, amen. Amen. Well, we're just also blessed last this past week. We did have um, uh, last Sunday. We were able to have baptisms. So that was a blessing. And uh, so we do have a certificate here for Brother Alvis. So Brother Alvis want to come on up over here. Amen. And uh, we just want to say God bless you. You know what? And, and uh, just such a blessing, brother, to be a part in baptizing, baptizing you. Right, brother? Amen, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And also David and, and Swift Amperano also got baptized as well. They got their certificates already. But you know what? Um, it was a blessing to also baptize them as well as they came to, you know, to make that decision as well for themselves. So praise God. And uh, we're just uh, we're just grateful to the Lord to be able to do so. And you know what? And just continuing to do so. Amen. So, Lord, bring them in so we can keep baptizing. Amen. So it's such a blessing. So thank you for your prayers and, and just the support. And let's keep doing the work of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let us uh, pray for the uh, tithes and offerings this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Father God, for another day of your faithfulness. We thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for this time together, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for there is no other like you and nor will there ever be any like you, Lord Jesus. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father God, for your peace, for your comfort 
for your strength, my God. And we thank you, Father God, that we're able to give cheerfully and wholeheartedly unto you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your provision in this house, Father. Thank you for providing for all the needs that are needed in this house, Lord. Father God, not just for the building, but Father, for we as a church body, my God, in our homes, Lord Jesus. And Father God, in our families, Lord Jesus. And Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for the wisdom, Lord, that you have given us by your spirit on how to manage the finances, Father God, that you have entrusted us to be stewards over, my God. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we just thank you, Father God, as Lord Jesus, part of our seeking you, Lord, is also in our giving, my God, because Lord Jesus, we are looking to you, Lord, the one to whom, Father God, all this comes from, Lord. And as we seek you, Father, help us to have willing hearts, my God, to hear you, Lord, and to listen, Father God, to Father, to grow in our giving, Lord Jesus, that Father God, Lord Jesus, because Lord, we know that it all comes from you and it belongs to you, Lord. So Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you for the abundance. We thank you for the overflow, my God. And we thank you, Father God, today, Lord Jesus, as you are able to make a way where there is no way, Father God. And Lord, we just thank you that you're able to open up a door that no man can shut, Father. But also thank you for those doors that you shut that no man can open, Father. Because, Lord Jesus, there are times that we do need those doors shut. So we just thank you this morning, Father. And we give you the praise, glory, and honor, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We can give the Lord a shout this morning. Amen. Praise God. We have the, the um, box back there, and you can put your tithes and offerings in there. Amen. Well, rich kids rooted in Christ, you are dismissed this morning. Amen. You guys have a great time in class today, and uh, looking forward to what the Lord has for you this morning. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. How oh, grateful to the God we were able to have our youth classes again, and I know they're happy. I know they're excited about it. Amen. I'll tell you, the look that they gave me a couple of weeks ago was just like, oh, man. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, that's kind of the look I get from a lot of the church sometimes when we go an extra 15 minutes, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Praise God. Have mercy. Well, Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you, Lord, continually, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father, Lord, just for this time today. We thank you, Father, as we're just here to seek you, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, as we come with hearts of gratitude and worship, Lord God, and just a praise and thankfulness, Father God, of Lord being so good, Lord. And Father, we just thank you for this time this morning, Father, as you direct our footsteps in all that we do. Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing forth your word by your spirit, and thank you for teaching us by your spirit, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that it is by your spirit that you open up our hearts and our minds to the understanding of the scriptures, Lord. And we just ask you this day, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, to lead us, guide us, and direct us in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let us turn our Bibles this morning to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And this is actually from the scripture that we're praying on Friday nights and we're going through for the month of September. And so we can get there. It's in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And it says here, I hear a couple of pages still turning, so I'll let everybody get there. Amen. But you probably know this one by heart. I know it's a very popular scripture that many of us will memorize or know because we, we hear it quite often. But it says here, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Amen? This is the word of the Lord this morning. And the title of today's message is, or the question would be, what are you seeking this morning? Or... Whom are you seeking, as we talked about a little while ago? But what are you seeking this morning? And we're going to go a little bit more into that this morning. But 
as we prayed on Friday night and as we were just seeking the Lord and looking to his word, it was this word kept popping. Well, this is the main word that we went to was that word seek. What is what is it to seek? What does that mean? Where what is you know, what is the purpose of that? Well, first of all, it's a word of action. <laughs> it's something that we have to be willing to do. OK, because we know that God has done everything for us. He died for our sins. He rose again on the third day. He's coming back for his church. He's left us, his, given us his word. He's given us his Holy Spirit. God is faithful. But he goes on to say, but seek first. And that what he does right there is he puts the responsibility on me and you. Now that's something that me and you have to do. That's something that is required for me and you to do. We actually have to take action in it. It says the word of God says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. He says, cast your cares upon me. So he's putting that responsibility on me and you. Submit to God then. Resist the devil. He's telling me and you what to do. But in doing that, in the obedience, is the power of God. Is the blessing of God. Is the understanding of who God is and the knowledge of God. But if we're not willing to put in, then how are we expecting to get anything out? Another version says, not just but seek first, but it says to continually seek first the kingdom of God. What does it mean to seek? Well, you're basically seeking in order to find. And it reminds me of the game hide and seek. You guys remember that game, right? We sometimes still do that with certain people, right? <laughs> So-and-so. Because in hide-and-seek, you're seeking, but you're seeking with the purpose and the intent to find because you don't want to be it anymore. <laughs> there's a purpose behind it. You know, there's a song that, you know, I'm old metalhead, you know, so a song that comes to mind is Seek and Destroy. <laughs> but that's not the purpose of hide and seek. (laughs) But still, there's a seeking and there's a purpose in that. Because you're not only seeking to find, but you're seeking to find because there's a purpose on what you're looking for. There's a purpose for when you're on that Netflix or you're on your Hulu or your Amazon Prime. (laughs) And what you're doing is you're seeking, or the cable... Or this way. And what you're doing is you're seeking to find something to watch. Right? I mean, it doesn't feel like that sometimes because you just go over and over again. You don't even know what to watch. But yet you still go through it. Because we're seeking to find something and we want to find it because there's a purpose because we want to watch something. We want to see it so there's a purpose behind it. But seek first. When we go to the grocery market, we go out there and we're seeking the groceries that we need for the house. Right? You're going shopping? Yeah, you seek a lot of other things you probably didn't need if you go to Costco. That happens to me all the time. But the whole purpose of it is you're there seeking to find what you need because you need it. How many of us know that we need food? We need the provisions. We need the things in this world to survive. We also need money to be able to pay for that food. (laughs) So there's a seeking and there's a finding, but there's a purpose for the seeking. When you're driving your car and that light has been on, for a while. And many of us with newer cars and the newer cars, you know, now you have the option, it has the miles of how many miles you got left. 
But now you're at the place that the miles disappeared. So now you're seeking a gas station <laughs> because you need gas. And so therefore, we're driving around trying to seek out a gas station because we need to find it because it's a purpose, because my car needs gas. If not, I'll be pushing it up 26th Street to the gas station. It's just an example. I mean, it happened once. Good thing I had my kids with me. And Letty. She got to drive. <laughs> But we're seeking to find. But what else are we seeking to find that has a purpose? How about some old ways? Some old ways of living, some old ways of thinking. Some old ways of speaking. Some old ways. What's the purpose of finding it? Well, I'm seeking to find my identity of who I am and who I used to be. Maybe you're seeking out a relationship, you're seeking out a friendship. You're seeking out a relationship, boyfriend and girlfriend. You're seeking out a relationship of marriage. You're seeking it out because you want to find, because there's a purpose to it. Because it's a desire. It's something you want, something you need, something we need as people, because we need one another. Relationships are very important. But seek first. Maybe you're seeking love. Maybe you're seeking joy. Maybe you're seeking peace, comfort. What are you seeking? But seek first in order to find. But seek first in order to find. Andrea shared the testimony. She was seeking out a hospital. Because in those times, it's scary. You don't know what's going on. You're in a place of panic, of despair. So we're seeking out help. Oh, but praise God, when she seeked Jesus, came the healing. Because, but seek first. But see, that's not always easy in the struggle, is it? It's not always easy in that place, right then and there. But I thank God that he brings to memory, especially when we need it the most always at that right time. Maybe we're seeking contentment, happiness, a disciplined life, life, steadfastness, endurance, old routines or new routines, our path, our goals, the changes in our lives. Maybe we're just seeking that joy that we had when we first gave our lives to the Lord. Because you ever found yourself in the place like that song says? You've lost that love and feeling. Oh, that love and feeling. You've lost that love and feeling. Now it's gone, gone, gone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys are going back to Top Gun with me, huh? Amen? <laughs> it's real easy to get there. 
and you find yourself in the place in, in a relationship with God and serving God and praising God, you find yourself like that in relationships with your, with your maybe in your marriage, in your family, in your friendships. You find yourself in this place in your job, in school, and just the day-to-day things that we do every day, we find ourselves in a place where we've lost that joy. And so what we do is we're now seeking it out, trying to reclaim, trying to regrasp, trying to get back to that place that somehow we lost or we think we lost along the way. But that's why the Word of God says, but seek first. But seek first. But seek first. See, this scripture, he's talking about the needs of the world. He says, clothes, food, I know that you need them. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. And yes, you do. But he says, but seek first. Those desires of your heart, those things that are in your heart today that you desire, you know what, in the right context, in the right place, God placed them there. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And He says, and all these things will be added unto you. God didn't call you to live a life of always being in despair or sad. He called you to a life to rejoice in the finished work at the cross and resurrection. Knowing that you have life today and that you have all that you need in Him, that's why we need to seek Him. Can we put up Ecclesiastes 3, verse 10 through 13? He says, I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in His time. He has also set eternity in the human heart Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. That is his gift for me and you, that we can enjoy our lives that he has given us because of what he has done for us. But it's when we start to allow the gift that God has given us to become greater than him, and we start to enjoy that more than we enjoy our God and our relationship with him, that's the sin. That's the issue. That's the place when we're trying to seek what we feel we've lost instead of seeking Him in whom we have everything. Because that's what it's all about. But then again, that word seek is going to be work. And how many of us know, and if you want to write this down, great, anything that requires work has to have a worth. Anything that requires work has to have a worth. You go to work and you work hard, but you work hard because there's a paycheck coming. What happens when that bill don't, when that paycheck don't come? I ain't showing up to work. Right? Do you go to work out of the goodness of your heart? (laughs) You wouldn't be at work unless, unless you were getting paid. But it has a worth. Marriage is work, but it has a worth. Parenting is work, but it has a worth. Serving God is work, but it has a worth. Salvation has already been paid through Jesus. And it was worth it. Because me and you in this world were worth it to God. And this is what the Lord is teaching us. 
But here's a question. Is he worth the work that it will take in seeking him? Oh, you got all quiet on me. I thought, you know. Is it worth the work that it will take in seeking God? You can answer. <laughs> Please answer. <laughs> it is. Good. That's what I wrote down here. They're going to say yes. So praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. We're all on the same page. I'm a little worried there. I'm like, Lord. <laughs> Close up. All right, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Well, this is what I want to talk about this morning as we seek the Lord. But this is why it's so important, because how many of us know we're still learning? We're still growing. We're still maturing. The Lord is still doing a work in us, but he says he's faithful to finish it. So how do I do this? What do I do here? What, what is, how do I get here, Lord? Because obviously on my own power, I, I don't have the will or the strength to seek you. I really don't. And then when I do seek you, Lord, sometimes it's just so great, so wonderful, Lord, that it can be a little bit scary because you're so holy. But that's why I need you. So let's go to John chapter 1 here. And we're going to see one area. But one of the main areas that we need to know why we're seeking him and what we're seeking him for. Because this is something very important that we as believers, as disciples of Christ, need. But we also got to be willing to be willing to seek him through it. In verse 35 of chapter 1 of John, it says, The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples. And he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? What are you seeking? What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Have you ever seeked the Lord as your teacher? He asked them a question, what are you seeking? What do you need? What are you looking to find and the purpose for it? And they called him rabbi because they were acknowledging they were looking for a teacher. Someone to teach them. Someone to instruct them. Someone to teach them about the kingdom of God. And this is what we need today as disciples, as believers. We need more by calling upon him also as our teacher. See, when we come together as a body of Christ, what are we seeking? Are we seeking how I'm going to feel, what I can get? Or are we seeking him, Lord, as our teacher? As our rabbi, as the one that, Lord, I need you to teach me. Because I don't understand why this is going on. I don't understand why I got to go through this. I don't understand where I'm at today. But Lord, if you teach me, then Lord God, I thank you because it's you that can give me the understanding and the strength that I need to have faith to walk through it. Because I know that I'm not alone. But see, we got to be willing to be taught. As the Bible says, teach a wise man and he shall be wiser still. Because if we're willing, then we're willing to acknowledge, Lord, I'm going to be learning all my life. I'll never know it all on this side. I'll never fully understand everything. But Lord, I want to be pliable. I want to be teachable. 
But this is the question we have to ask ourselves when we come together to seek the Lord. When, I, when you take the time to read the Bible, even when you're praising and worshiping God through song, are you seeking Him to teach you through it? As we learned earlier, that no matter what, through the pain, through the fear, but I still got to praise God. Where did that come from? From the teaching of the Word of God that is implanted on good soil. A sacrifice of praise that the Word of God says, and maybe we've heard it time and time again, but it's not until we get to that place that we find ourselves in a place, but Lord, I got to praise you. But that came through the teacher who teaches me and you how to do it. And not to give up, but to see it through. But are we willing to seek Him and acknowledge our need for Him to teach us? Because He's willing to take me and you, He's willing to teach us. It says, Come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. See, the Lord is willing to teach me and you. But it's our responsibility to be willing to seek him to teach us. You know that if you allow your children to choose whether they'll get up to go to school, they probably won't go. Some might. <laughs> but majority, I'm going to go out by faith on the limb here. <laughs> They're probably not. And colleges, they teach more or less, it's up to you what you want to do. The courses are here, the classes are here, the professors are here, but it's up to you whether you want to do it or not and show up. And if not, then we'll just drop you. See, in order to be taught, the student, the disciple, has to be willing to learn. Has to be willing to show up. Has to be willing to seek out that knowledge, that understanding, that wisdom to learn. It takes work. I'll be honest, I didn't like school. I didn't do well in school. And I find myself in that place many times with the Lord. But I thank God he doesn't expel you. Sometimes I feel like I'm on time out, but you know. It's... But he's good and faithful. But it takes work on our part. It takes us seeking him. Lord, I need you to teach me. But are we willing to seek him? Are we here today seeking him to teach us? Are we here today? Lord, teach me, Lord. I need to know. Lord, I, I need you. I'm here for you, Lord God. Through your word. Teach me how to overcome this situation. Teach me to continue in faith in you, Lord. Teach me to stand, Lord God. Teach me through your word by your spirit, Lord God. Because that's how faithful he is. And again, the question is, what are you seeking? I'll tell you, if you're waiting till Sunday to get into the word of God, you're missing out. You're robbing yourself. You're causing your own pain. You're causing your own confusion many times because you're not willing to seek God. God. Not just for his presence in the goosebumps, but seeking God for his wisdom of what you already have, of who he is and who he is in you. I'm not saying we won't find ourselves in places. No, it's a battle. It's a struggle. That's why we need him to continually teach us as we continually seek him. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. It's in that knowledge that even though God, but yet God, I still know you're greater. This is what your word says. 
This is what your word spoke. This is what my brothers and sisters went through. But God, you still brought them through. And even when it didn't look like it, but today, my God, as your word says, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So even in death, we have victory. We can rejoice. Because it's not just a lifelong relationship, it's an eternal relationship. And that is the peace that we can have today because we are comforted with these words for those that we miss today. We're comforted with these words through his word because he's teaching us. Through his love, through his mercy. I shared in the morning about a show I saw, and the guy says, man, you know, don't you know God is vengeful? Haven't you ever read the Old Testament? <laughs> but see, if we actually read the Old Testament and seeking God to teach us, through the teaching, we get to see, God, you're not vengeful. Man, you are merciful. You are so compassionate. You are so patient. Lord, I would have destroyed all of them already. But I'm not God. Thank God, right? And I know sometimes you feel like that at work or outside, you know, different things. We all have those moments. But thank God we're not God. But then again, thank God we're not God because I'm pretty sure we find ourselves in that place many times. But this is what they were seeking. Rabbi, teacher. And our prayer is, Lord, let that be the heart of the church today, Lord, that we are seeking you to teach us. But in that teaching, you teach us how to praise you, to worship you. Lord God, how to walk and live in the gifts of your spirit, Lord God. How to grow in the gifts of the spirit. How to grow in the fruit of the spirit, Lord God. How to recognize and discern false teaching. How to recognize and discern your word from someone else's word. How to recognize and have discernment of motives, of manipulation, of God's word. But that can only come if we're willing to learn. Because I'm sorry, you can, you can point your finger at the pastor and you could blame me for not growing, but I'm not responsible for your growth. I'm responsible for my growth, and I'm responsible to make sure that I continue to bring forth the word of God to you so you can grow. Because I believe that the word of God is powerful enough to save, to heal, to deliver, to set the captive free. But it has to be our desire as believers, as the church, to receive that word and want to go find out for ourselves and choose to take that time to grow and to know God more and more for ourselves. Because I will not stand with you in the presence of God. You will stand alone and you alone will be held accountable to God the Father for what you did with what God had given you. But so will I. I won't be able to push Letty out in front. She will stand alone and I will stand alone as we will all stand alone before the judgment seat of Christ. What are you seeking? If you go to the word of God, he'll teach me and you how to stand in these times. How to trust him through it all. How to overcome. But are we willing to seek him? Let's go to a couple of scriptures here. Jeremiah 29. We'll go to verse 11 through 14. In this scripture, they were in captivity. In this scripture, they had gone through so much, it looked like God had forsaken them. But God hadn't forsaken them because he never broke his covenant. And he never broke that promise. So he's reminding them in the place of captivity, 
in a place he says, you're going to be here for a while while I do a work through you. You ever been there? <laughs> God, I feel like I've been here for 40, 40 years. But he hasn't forgotten about you. Because as we heard earlier, he will lose not one. Verse 10 says, For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. But look at this part. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your hearts. See, to seek God is not just seeking him, but it's seeking him with all our hearts. Lord, I want to hear from you. I want to know, and though I may not like sometimes what I'm going to hear, I'm not going to want to do what you're requiring me to do. But Lord, because I'm seeking you with all my heart, I know that you've given me the provision to do it, to live it, to believe it. And he goes on to say, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Oh, praise God. Because see, Israel, they could have tried to get back to the homeland on their own. But God says, no, seek me first, and I will bring you back around. Yeah. Stop seeking the old ways. Stop seeking the way things used to be. Stop seeking the, thing, the way we think things should be. And start seeking God first. But seek First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Because when you seek him, he says he will be found by you. And he will restore the fortunes. He will restore the desire. He will restore in the right way what his plan and purpose is for me and you. When we're willing to seek him with all our hearts. Let's go to Isaiah 55, 6-7. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And seeking the Lord, there has to be an urgency. How many know that there is an urgency today for our lives, for the lives of this world today, to seek the Lord while he may be found? There has to be an urgency to seek out the Lord to teach me and you. So when persecution comes, when the tribulations come, when the storms come, when all these things start to come into our lives like a flood, we can remember and know, but Lord, you raise the standard. And the standard is his word. The teaching of the Lord. But how will we know this unless we're go coming to know our God? Are we here to seek to know God? That should be the desire of we as a church today. Yes, we have issues. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for that. I was standing alone here. Okay. <laughs> okay, we all have issues, right? I right, two hands up here. Just praise the Lord, though, you know? That's why I take those two hands and I praise the Lord with them. It's a good one right there. Amen. I got issues, but that's why I praise my hands. It's good. I like that. Right. Mental note. Amen. Got to remember that. <laughs> because we all got issues, but don't focus on the issues. Focus on God. And he can teach me and you how to work out. His, he's working out those issues. To trust him in the process and the work. Because he is able to remove those desires. To make them undesirable. But there must be an urgency in seeking the Lord, seeking him to teach us. But it also comes with a requirement, as it says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. We have to be willing to let go of our old ways. 
We got to be willing to let go of our own understanding. We got to be willing to lay down our own knowledge, our own wisdom for the sake of him. Why is it so important? Because it says in verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. See, we may think that God is going to move in a certain way. We may think that God is going to open up a door in a certain way. We may think that God wants to do something in a certain way. But let me encourage you, trust God because his thoughts are not our thoughts. They're higher than our thoughts. They're greater than our thoughts. And his ways are greater than our ways. And remember what the word of God says. He is able to do far more abundantly than all we could even dare to even ask him to do. But are we willing to be teachable and to lay even aside everything that we've known, all that we know, for the sake of knowing him more? Because that's what's important. It's not, Lord, how much I know. Lord, I know nothing. Paul says, I count it all as lost. Because it's for the sake of knowing him the teacher, the one who went about in his ministry teaching. Oh, but don't look to me, guys, because I'm still learning myself. But we're learning together. And I got to depend upon the same one you depend on. The Holy Spirit. Look at John chapter 14, verse 25 to 30. We got just a couple of scriptures here left. 14, 25 to 30. He says, these things I have spoken to you while I'm still with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. See, my faith and belief has to be that when the word of God is going forth, that the Holy Spirit is able to teach me and you. I could take no credit for teaching, Because it's not me, it's his Holy Spirit that I'm dependent upon as you are dependent upon and we are dependent upon to bring that word to life. Right? How many times have we heard the word of God and we may have heard this scripture time and time again, but it's not until that one day and we've heard it from many teachers, many preachers, many people through text, through apps. (laughs) But it's that one day that the Holy Spirit opens up our minds to understand the scripture. And it's like, wow, I'm so amazed. But are we amazed enough to even go deeper to seek him more? Lord, I want more of you. See, we sing a song, Lord, I want more of you. But what do we want, just the goosebumps? Or do we want literally more of him to teach us? Because I love his presence. Don't get me wrong. I love the presence of God. But it's in that presence that, Lord, I don't deserve to be here. I need you to teach me, Lord, how to be here. Because, Lord, 
you are worthy of it all. But it's through your teaching that you teach us that I'm clean today. I'm righteous today because of my faith and belief in what you did for me and what you did for us and what you did for the whole world today. That is the only reason I'm able to be in your presence. Praise God for that. Amen. You can go here later in 2 Timothy chapter 3, but it's very important. And time is of essence. It is urgent times. Because the Bible talks about perilous times. Times that men will be lovers themselves. Talks about all these different things, but it goes on to talk about the power of God, how Scripture is all God-breathed. It's good for edification, for rebuking, for exhortation. It's good. But see, me and you got to be to a place where we are able to stand alone in faith in who our Lord Jesus Christ is. Because no matter what comes upon the world and all that is going on around us today, when we're seeking the Lord as our teacher, He will teach me and you to continue to trust in Him to continue to believe in Him, to continue to know His power and His authority and how great He is. Through the sickness, to know that, Lord, You're still the healer, God. To know through the bondage that, Lord, You're still the deliverer, God. To know through the lack that, Lord, You're still the provider, Lord God. But, Lord, help me to be willing to learn, to seek You as my teacher. Because, Lord, I want you to teach me. Because you know what's so great about learning something new? I was able to tie my own shoes today. Oh, thank you guys. I appreciate that. Amen. (laughs) Because I learned. Aren't you grateful that you learned how to take a shower? We are. (laughs) Because they're for the edification. Definitely showers is great edification for all of us. Amen. To drive. Your profession and what you do and your job. Many times we find ourselves, even in our jobs, we find ourselves in a rut. Lord, I'm not learning anything. I'm not growing here. So thank God there's opportunities to grow. But one of the questions I always encourage you to do is in that place, no matter if it's work, school, home, marriage, family, remain teachable. Because if you're willing to do it from a place of learning, because let me tell you something, to start a new job is hard because you have to learn. I think one of the hardest things about starting a new place that, I, that it was hard for me, and that is hard for me when that happens, is having to learn what I don't know and having to ask questions. But one of the things I learned through that is to encourage others when they find themselves in that place is I would rather ask, have you ask me many times than to do it wrong and make a huge mistake. Because there's nothing wrong with asking. But once you learn it, it's a joy. But let me encourage you, if there's still more to learn, then find those areas where you can learn, even if you're not getting paid for it. Because let me tell you something. Education, learning something new, a new trade, a new position, a new place, even if you're not getting paid for it, believe me, there is still a value. Because there are many things that I've learned in my job and did many jobs that I was nowhere near getting paid the amount to do, but I'll tell you something, I know it was valuable because I got to learn hands-on training while getting paid for something that I didn't have to go pay for. I look back at the many years, someone without a high, high school diploma, without a college education, but yet God has raised me up and taught me so many ways and so many things and opened up so many doors 
because I always found myself in a place that, Lord, I just want to learn. Just teach me. And even if it was times, and many times it was in the place that others were teaching me to do it, and they would take the credit. But that's okay. I didn't tell you I did it cheerfully. <laughs> I won't tell you the things I would say. But it's VC times, right? Before church today? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Made you think on that one, huh? But still, if it takes work, work, then it must have a worth. But you have to be willing to see it that way. You have to be willing to see yourself as a student. Raising kids, raising a husband. <laughs> Thank God for Letty, amen. <laughs> Thanks for finding that funny. <laughs> but encouraging one another and building each other up as well. Because let me encourage you, someone is learning from you. They're either learning the wrong things or they're learning the right things. But I thank God that, Lord, you know what? They're still learning. <laughs> Amen? So I tell you, I learned a lot, even from the wrong things, how to do the right thing. Amen? Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord, and we give you the praise, glory, and honor, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this time this morning, Father God. And Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father, because, Lord, we're here today to seek you, Lord. We seek you as our teacher, Lord, as the one, Lord Jesus, who was able to teach us by your spirit, Lord. But, Father God, today, Lord, we acknowledge this takes work, Lord. It takes our part. It takes sacrifice, Lord. It takes, Father God, even through, Father, busy days and tired days, Lord, still taking that time to seek you in your word, to teach us, Lord to instruct us, Father God. But in that, Father God, Lord Jesus, through that seeking, Lord, you teach us, Father God, for our lives, but also for the lives of others, Lord. And in that, Father God, you help us to grow in praying for one another, Lord, for praying for those today that are in hard places, Lord, that are in tough situations. Father God, as we seek you, Lord God, Father God, you help us, Lord Jesus, to look at others, Lord, and others in our lives and those around us, Father, our family members, our community, our neighbors, our nation, the whole world today, my God. And Father, we just thank you today, Lord Jesus, because, Father, it comes from seeking you, Lord. And, Father, you know all the things that we need. You know all the things that, Father God, Lord Jesus, the desires of our hearts. But, Father God, thank you for reminding us, Lord, that through it all, Father God, to seek you first. Father, even in the area of our finances, Lord, help us to seek you first, Lord. Many times, Father God, we know that a certain money coming in and we already know what we're going to buy. But Father, help us to get to a place, Father God, where we ask you, Lord, Lord, what do you want us to do with your finances, Lord Jesus, that you provided for our household? And Father God, some, many times that may be a place of giving, Lord. But, Lord Jesus, because, Father, you're teaching us, Lord, how to manage your finances. But, Lord, in that, you're also teaching us, Father God, that it's not just our finances, but it's our whole lives. In our time, in our jobs, our schools, our families, our marriages, our kids, our relationships and friendships, Lord. Relationships, Father God, and boyfriend and girlfriend, my God. Father God, Lord Jesus, in so many areas, such as co-workers, as brothers and sisters in Christ, my God. But Lord, we can only do this, Father, if we're willing to seek you first, Lord. But Father, we can't do it alone, Father. We need your help by your Spirit, Lord. And Father God, you know every area of our heart. You know the struggles. You know the areas, Father God, Lord Jesus, that Father... You're doing a work in, and we thank you that you're faithful to do so. But Lord Jesus, through it all, Father God, help us to be willing to learn through it, Lord. That, Father God, that we would be able to live, as your word says, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So, Father, we just thank you this morning. As Lord Jesus, we seek you, Lord. You're our teacher, Lord. And Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that 
for all the power and authority that is in you, Lord Jesus, that you are. And we thank you, Father God, that, Lord, every situation, every circumstance, and all that we see all around the world today, Lord, you are aware of it, and you are in control of it, Father. So teach us how to pray, Lord, in believing and having faith that, Lord Jesus, you are. And, Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that, Lord, you have torn down the walls, Lord. You have broken the bondage. You have brought down, Father God, Lord Jesus, the mountains, Lord. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand in faith today, my God, because you are the one to whom we seek. And we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor this day, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We are dismissed this morning. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen. If you need prayer here this morning, I will still be up here this morning for prayer. Let's continue to seek the Lord together. And Bible study Wednesday night. Amen. Amen. It wasn't a setup for Bible study, guys. This is real. Amen. Amen. Well, you guys have a blessed day today. Thank you guys for joining us online as well today.